Welcome to Nugget 84 with Steve Groman. What will we be talking about today? Today we are going to talk about Pluto. Oh, the non-ninth planet? It was always considered a planet since its discovery back in the 30s, and then uh, in 2006 they said, well, no, it's not a planet. The reason they said that is because they came up with a new definition of planets in 2006. And then in 2017, Will Grundy with the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff said, no, Pluto is a planet. It always has been. Well, he's got a vested interest because Pluto was, quote, discovered at the Lowell Observatory in the 1930s there in Flagstaff. They're arguing whether Pluto is a planet, and it's been a controversy now for a number of years. Right. But today we're going to talk about Mike Brown. He's the man that is ultimately responsible for kicking Pluto out of being called a planet. Okay. Apparently they found some... Some other icy bodies out around Neptune, and, you know, he's been examining all this stuff. And he says that they found a planet that's much larger, and so therefore they need to redefine Pluto. And what does the one have to do with the other? Yeah, that's that's what's really interesting, isn't it? Well, where did he find this new planet? Well, he's interested in the, the Kuiper Belt, which is a region of icy comets, they say, in asteroids beyond Neptune's orbit. And he says, I wanted to understand what was out there. I thought there were probably new planets to find. And he's a professor of planetary astronomy at California Institute of Technology. He analyzed a bunch of images from nearby observatories. They identified a number of new objects, they say. He found this thing by scouring, it says in here, a massive number of images taken by telescopes from nearby observatories. With a telescope, you can, I mean, we used to have a telescope. You can actually see something out there. The fact of the matter is, it's not what they show us. That's, that's I guess, the biggest point. We, well, we I know that. you'd drag us out there to look at something, and all we saw was this white fuzzy thing and it was kind of like well that's disappointing what they do is they take many photographs up in the sky and they say that there's uh they look at one exposure to the next to the next to the next over the course of days weeks months and years and they find that there's something out there that it seems to be a little bit unusual he's looking for things that move he says Okay, we need to pause here for a minute because you just read exposures and all that. So they are taking photographs because, as I understand it, these are Earth telescopes where the telescopes that you have quoted the articles in the past where they say they're not taking photographs of anything, it's because those are space telescopes. So these are totally different types of telescopes. So these yes. are actually taking Sci pictures. Yes, yeah. Scientific okay. American back in April of 2019 has an article in there, Cosmology Has Some Big Problems, and in it it says, Today's space telescopes provide no direct view of anything. And it's a different type of scope that we're talking about. Okay, in so that these article. are Earth's but telescopes. Yes, correct, okay, well correct. that helps. They found this thing that was more massive than Pluto, and it says astronomers soon began debating what it means to be a planet. An interesting thought that comes to my mind is, so what if something is larger than Pluto? So is Neptune, and <laughs> so is your the way they claim everything is so much is larger but anyway i guess it's another topic yeah i always kind but of felt here, bad for pluto because it was this little tiny thing way out there yeah, way it, out at the end and now they said no it's not a planet because it's too little correct he says we're basically looking back to the earliest history of the solar system it says uh, it took time to discuss the next big mysteries in our corner of the universe including why our solar system is such an oddball whether it might harbor extraterrestrial life and where we might finally find Planet Nine. Now, Pluto was considered the ninth planet, so now they've kicked it out, so now they're looking for Planet Nine. Well, that's kind much. of mean to call us an oddball. I think we're the apple of God's eye. Well, he, I think he our put this earth here to be inhabited, right. it says in Isaiah. Once again, they're just these people, slamming us. They are slamming us, and that is what it's all about. Isn't and this their home, too? Let's look for extraterrestrial life and all that kind of stuff. Let's look for ET out there. It says here, when we first found this, we spent a couple of years trying to convince ourselves that it was not caused by a planet. And then he's asked a question, what makes you think there's an undiscovered planet 9? And he goes on talking about how there's these uh, orbits that they detect. They say they've detect anyway. But he says they're not circular like other orbits of other planets. He says, when we first found this, we spent a couple of years trying to convince ourselves that it was not caused by a planet. But we came to the conclusion that there's nothing else it could be. This new planet is huge, probably six times more massive than Earth. And then he goes talk about how it gravitationally dominates everything and everything. It affects other icy body orbits and all that. Now, here's the thing. They have no idea that any of that's correct. Just like he was talking about earlier and later again, I think in the same article we talk about it, they've always believed something was to be and then they find something else that discover this thing and now they realize that all the stuff they used to think is wrong. And this is going to be not, not much different than that. They say that there is a a dimming of a, a any given star or light out there. And they'll notice a dim. That's why when they're looking at these, these photographs from many months apart from each other, they'll notice that 
it dims, and they'll assume that something just traveled in front of it and blocked its light. In a nutshell, that's the, that's what it is. Then it'll come back, and then it'll be a little bit of time, who knows how long, and uh, wherever it comes back around again and dims again. Well, I think I have a kind of a crazy way to explain it. Pretend like there is a Christmas ornament out in someone's yard, a blown-up Santa Claus that's lit up. You're in the yard of the house across the street. And a car is coming around the block, and when the car passes in front of the Christmas light, it dims. You can't see it because the car passes by. And then they make the block, and they may speed up a little bit, and the next thing you know, you can see the Christmas ornament lit up again in the yard across the street. And now here comes another car, and it blocks that light. Is that what you mean? Is sort of just something's passing through, so they are presuming yes. that's what happens because we can see that that's sort of why something dims, but it doesn't prove there's actually something passing in front of it. It just proves that the light is dimming. Right. The lit up snowman or whatever you said there <laughs> might well be on a timer that uh, just dims. Right. And he then just then flashes it comes back or he's got a short. On and off. The point is they say that there is therefore evidence of a planet of some sort there. And in this case, they're trying to call it planet. Nine. So they they're haven't physically seen the planet. They've just Correct. seen this dimming in front Correct. of this light that they found out in this icy belt that's who knows yeah, but then it goes it's off much further than from Neptune, and then they've got a 50% distance gap in between 10 to 15 times farther away? They know it's probably. How do you know it's probably? And they know it's <laughs> dimming, but they have this ginormous, I'll use that word, I know that's not very scientific, distance that they don't even know? Right. They say we know it's probably 10 to 15 times farther away than Neptune. We know how it's tilted, but we basically don't. We basically know the path that travels through the sky. There's absolutely no way that they can know that. But here's the problem. People believe this stuff straightforward. And, and they just, I mean, well, it sounds intrigued. exciting. Absolutely, it sounds exciting. But it's not true. It's just what this guy's messing around with and thinking works. Yeah, and let me, let me read this part. It says, but I think we now know how to go through the universe of data that exists out there and process it in a way that we can pick out Planet Nine moving across the sky without necessarily having to go to any telescope at all. He says you have to figure out how to connect these three objects out of the billions of other things around them. Computationally... It's an incredibly intensive task, but it's one that I think we're now finally up to. There are billions of other things out there that are in the way, uh, but we got to find these three. I'm telling you, I just don't believe these the way they're, they're set up. Why on earth are these people talking about this again and again? It's because students are learning these things, and they are vehement about that this is factual. And we're trying to expose that these articles, these sort of pure articles that most people don't read, they're exposing the non-scientific nature of it. We're going to wrap this thing up, but I want you to understand something out there, folks. This thing, they're talking about extraterrestrials again. And he says, if we could find life anywhere else in our solar system, it would be a surefire indicator that life is incredibly easy to start. Well, if life is incredibly easy to start, why haven't they started any? He says, if well, you have the right conditions, you have life. If we find microbial life, if we find spewing out of vents, if we find hints of some weird methane-based life, then we know that life is really easy to form. Right, they're trying to find these things on Europa and Enclades, or however you say that one, and Titan. It's all just a spatial thing. All these things out in space, and they just want to minimize humanity. But we know that the Lord said He created this earth to be inhabited, and Jesus came to die for us. And you know what? I think now that we are going into the Bible, we have a super nugget that we want to talk to you about, and that will be in Nugget 85. Is the word planet in the Bible? Why don't you look it up before the next nugget, and we'll come back, and we will return on this topic. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. We hope you are enjoying these nuggets and the longer videos that we are posting on our YouTube channel, Steve Groman, and our Facebook pages, A Creation Seminar and Steve Dana Groman. This is a listener-supported ministry. Please tell your friends and family about our YouTube channel and our Facebook pages. These nuggets are to encourage you and encourage your family and encourage your walk with God. As you know, we are normally in churches presenting our seminar. Because of COVID, we have been derailed greatly. Our last meeting was the first week of March, and now we have had one in this last week of June. Extremely scaled down version of the seminar. We have recently had seven cancellations for July and August. So 
So if you will keep us in your prayer, if you are blessed by these nuggets and could become a monthly partner with us, that would be greatly appreciated. Or if you could consider giving a one-time donation to help us continue to produce these nuggets and continue this ministry during such unprecedented times. Thank you.